It's a new module series. I haven't done one of these since uh, Icewind Dale, which is a module that I gave up on after a while. And we're here to talk about one that I have not given up on because it's much better than Icewind Dale, or at least the start. I just hated the start of Icewind Dale so much. Uh, nevertheless, we're here to talk about Tomb of Annihilation. But yeah, I wanna I wanna go through everything in somewhat of an order of how the module's gonna present them to you, um, in terms of just the things that you'll probably need to know when you start running this adventure. The first few episodes of this are just gonna be, you know, while you're prepping, keep these in mind. And I wanna talk about kind of the impact of some of the main themes of Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, and start off with, we're going with the big reason that Tomb of Annihilation is a campaign, the Death Curse. This is the incentive for the party to go to Chult and complete the adventure because there's some bad stuff happening. Uh, so, something that my players have never really noticed before is um, the, the timer. So, this is a module where tracking days is kind of important because there are some foes that the party might encounter that may have um, may be impacted by the amount of days that's gone on. Making it up is going to be a little difficult and will definitely break a lot of the immersion of the game because it's a game that's very easy to keep track of in terms of the days. I would recommend doing it because the death curse is ticking away every day. This is an adventure on a time limit. It's a loose time limit. It's more so an incentive rather than you have to do it or the world ends because the world isn't going to end. It's not that big. It will become that big if they don't stop the threat but for now, it is slowly ruining some elements of life. All the popular chat adventurers are dying, you know what I mean? Uh, so, the Soulmonger, which is the thing that's causing the death curse, I'll talk about that in another video at some point when it becomes important, uh, was activated 20 days ago, assumed at the start of the campaign. So however many days the campaign has been going on for, so if you've tracked it and it's like, we're five sessions in and it's been 17 days, Add 20 to that total, that's how many days the death curse has been going on. And I think it's important to keep track of that because there are foes that the party will encounter that will have their hit points affected in this way. And if they're using Syndra Sylvain as kind of like their hook into Chult, then she's on the timer and determining that is important because she only has, I believe like, she has 99 days, I think I checked because she's an Archmage. And there's no way to escape it. If you were on the material plane when it started, you're fucked. So, any humanoid on the planet that's been killed and brought back to life are now slowly decomposing. It's assumed that, again, the adventure takes place 20 days after the death curse has begun to happen because people have started to notice it. And their hit point maximum is reduced by the amount of days that the um, game has been going on for. The, death curse. So if the death curse has been around for 45 days, anyone who is affected by the death curse has their hit point maximum reduced by 45. And it says, it doesn't say anything that uh, it can't be increased or restored actually looking at this. So yeah, that's an important thing. There is no way to get that lost hit points back uh, until you f get the soulmonger done. You, you finish it. So yeah. That's, that's something that's been happening for a while. Something else that I've just noticed, which makes the death curse even scarier, is that if you have it, and your hit point, hit point maximum is reduced further by, I don't know, having like a freaking wraith or something go, and then you're like, ah, that's what wraiths do. Uh, it can't go back up with that either. So undead speed up the process. So yeah, this, this isn't gonna affect the party too much unless they choose for it to, which is not a good idea at all. But it is gonna affect the outside world. If they have an ally that has the death curse, it's gonna definitely affect them, or an enemy, it's also gonna affect them. If a humanoid dies, their soul's gonna be trapped in the Soulmonger, and it can only be freed if the Soulmonger is destroyed. So there's a very real chance to get back everyone who's fallen which is a great incentive for a good party to go and get it done. Something else is that any spell that revives people automatically fails because of the death curse, because now they're dead. If people die, they stay dead. That's the thing about the, the death curse. Something that I like about it is that it's a bit of a commentary on how the world of D&D works, because it's kind of assumed that when you're in the late game, it's like, yeah, we can, um, we can revive people, it's fine. But when you know that you can't, it creates a much bigger risk. And if you run this game on meat grinder mode, <laughs> it becomes a very terrifying thing because the cleric feels a little more useless, the paladin feels a little more useful, uh, useless, except when they're fighting zombies, which there are a lot of. 
Um, something interesting to note though is things like Speak With Dead aren't affected by the Soulmonger because it doesn't tap into their direct soul. It more so just creates a small duplicate of it that can't really learn new information, etc, etc. So yeah, that's kind of how the Death Curse works. So in terms of giving your players incentives to push on with the um, Death Curse motive, if you know what I mean, and um, work towards helping the world, etc, etc. A main way to do it is having a party member be affected by it, right? My player in the Tomb of Annihilation home game that I'm running right now has a uh, friend in a war that died and couldn't be brought back because the Death Curse had just started. So went to Chult to go and solve it ASAP. That's a great incentive. He's definitely pushing for that main quest as fast as he can, I've noticed as well. So yeah, I like that. Some people don't even have to have it directly affect them for it to morally drive them. For instance, in that same home game, we also have a good old lawful good paladin of a, a holy order, you know what I mean? That, that sort of person who wants to save the world because that's their duty, you know what I mean? So I like that. I think that that's a good incentive to also go and do it. Just have a character who would innately save people and do good things. There's also another motive that uh, Ryan's character has that is a bit different. It doesn't necessarily involve the soulmonger, it's more so using that as an excuse to go and loot the place. <laughs> Which I like too, getting there, not really listening to the soulmonger thing, but being like, that's where the treasure is, right? Got it, we're going there. All that sort of stuff. Something else to note is that there are several characters and creatures that are affected by the death curse that the party will meet along the way. There is, uh, I think her name is Jessamine, one of the merchant princes who has it. She is directly afflicted by it and um, the party are most likely going to see it. The same with Raz Nasi, which is the, uh, is, he's a guy very late into the game that you shouldn't really have to worry about too much, honestly. But Raz Nasi is an important figure, um, is the closest thing to a second to last boss fight that you can have in the module, apart from, you know, the big man himself. He's also got that. Uh, and I think there might be others as well that I haven't fully looked into yet, but... I think that if you want to make something more interesting, you could give Artis Simba the death curse. I think that would be cool, honestly. He doesn't have that many hit points to begin with, so he is on quite a bit of a time limit himself, which can also be a driving force for the party. Pushing forward alongside Artis if they ever find him or meet with him, and he is about to die, but he carries a very important relic that not many other people will be able to hold. It's kind of like a, a moral obligation, like that thing is going to destroy everything if we don't help him. And hey, it might incline Artis to be a little bit of a nicer guy, because in my games he is not. Uh, <laughs> not too much anyway, he has no reason to be. In any case, that's the uh, Death Curse. Uh, next we're going to talk about, I think we're going to talk about starting levels, because that's something else that is important. The stream game started at level 3, and the home game started at level 5. Mainly out of uh, the home game starting at level 5 was we played another adventure where the party had barely got to level 3 so they were like, oh, we really want to do like level 5, we want to have that extra attack, we want to have those third levels and I'm like, yeah, go for it. Uh, it made the start a bit easier, but yeah, I'll talk more about that as we go through the series which I'm very excited to get into. Woo! Uh, in any case, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of this series so that you can be notified when we do it. We have a Discord where you can talk about the series and you can also comment uh, on the video for algorithm stuff. We like that. Um, there's a shop you can check out in the description too if you need to. In any case, thank you for watching. See ya. So, it's a new model. <laughs>